I've just watched an interview on Good Morning Britain uh, with Sir David Davies, the uh, Tory MP, and he's uh, he's sort of spearheading a campaign. Look into the case of Lucy Letby. Now, Davies isn't saying that Letby is innocent, but he's saying essentially that there are serious questions of her guilt. And I have to say, the more that comes out about this case, the more it seems there is something seriously wrong with that guilty verdict. Um, the interview was irritating because Susanna Reid and Ed Balls kept interrupting. Um, and yes, as a journalist, you need to you know challenge your subject, but it was it was an irritating interview because Davis was trying to articulate his points and he was, uh, yeah, I'll put a link to it and you'll see what I mean. But notably, he, he raised several points on this that raised questions. Uh, he mentioned that he wanted to get a court transcript. Even as a member of parliament, apparently it costs £100,000. Now, that is disgraceful. How are we supposed to have a trans transparent justice system when even a member of parliament has that sort of barrier? So you can imagine a journalist or uh, a regular campaigner that isn't an, on an MP salary. That's a huge amount of money, an extortionate amount of money to get a transcript. Very concerning. Um, it, it gets into the wider issue of legal transparency, but that's, that's that. Um, this is some of the things that Davies has highlighted. Um, like a lot of people, he believes she was guilty initially. And it's worth mentioning, David Davies is hardly a bleeding heart liberal. You know, he would certainly be on the right of the Conservative Party, someone who would be ostensibly, you know, tough on crime. In fact, when he ran for Tory leader, that was one of the things he pitched himself to be. So this isn't some sort of um, lefty liberal person. This is someone who would be it's quite conservative, you know, and would absolutely support convicted criminals facing justice. So that, I think, is just, it's, I'm not saying it's the most significant thing, but it, it's notable. Now, this is some of the details about the Letby case that raised questions. Um, she was convicted of seven deaths, um, and that's what she's serving a whole life tariff for. Um, now, in the period that she was in the Countess of Chester Hospital, that period, a normal hospital apparently would see two to three uh, children dying. Sadly, that does happen. But in that period, 15 to 17 children, babies, died. Yet Let Be was convicted of about half of those. What about the other half? The reason she wasn't convicted of the other deaths is she was not on duty at that time. So that raises questions about even if you take away the deaths that were associated with her that she was convicted for, then you have, let's say, what, seven or eight deaths uh, that were still unexplained. And it can't have been her because she wasn't on duty. So that raises a question of why, why have they been dismissed? As if it's just irrelevant. If that is excess deaths in the hospital, then it points to some sort of failing in that hospital um and he's mentioned that some very credible people medical experts on both sides of the atlantic including you know many in the united states have contacted him and said keep going you're onto something here he's quoted the royal statistical society uh, on that issue about half the deaths uh, being disregarded wasn't on duty um and he also pointed out that in six out of seven of these cases, the babies received a post-mortem and it was ruled to be natural causes. Um, Davis also pointed out that in our system, the prosecution these days has two to three days to present evidence. That's two to three days of you know them pushing forward the information to convict the defendant. Um, Susanna Reid said, well, look, she had a defence lawyer. It was their responsibility to, you know, call witnesses. But defence lawyers can be inefficient. They can have shortcomings. Um, I think it's pretty obvious there were a lot of people that maybe should have testified and didn't. Whether that was from the defence not getting in touch with them, whether it's because they weren't called. Um, I don't know, you know, 
why is it these experts are coming forward now and they were not brought to the trial? You know, was that some sort of mitigation on the part of the defence lawyers? Um, it's it's troubling. I do think that a lot of this case, I mean, she had two trials. I think so much of it seems to be circumstantial. The fact that she happened to be in the wards at the time, the fact she was a bit rude to the parents, apparently. Um, and there was also a lot put on the fact that she wrote a diary entry confessing. But now, and this is the Daily Mail, um, report by Richard Marston, a note scribbled by Keller nurse Lucy Deputy saying, I am evil, was written on the advice of a counsellor, has been claimed. Uh, supposedly, um, a source told The Guardian last night that the note and others like it were written on the advice of professionals, so it's a male quote in The Guardian, um, as a way of dealing with extreme stress. It's no mystery that nurses in recent years are under enormous stress. The source went on to say the notes were produced after counselling sessions as part of a therapeutic process in which she was advised to write down her trouble, troubling thoughts and feelings. Head of Occupational Health and Wellbeing at the Countess of Chester Hospital, Catherine de Beger, or Be Beger, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, is said to have encouraged Deputy to write as a way of coping with extreme stress. Deputy Chester GP reportedly also advised her to write down thoughts struggling to process, as well as writing, I am evil, I did this on the post-it note, covered, uh, sorry, not a diary, it was a post-it note, um, which the police found in the house. Covered in density scrawled handwriting, she also wrote, I killed them on purpose because I am not good enough to care for them. I and I am a horrible, evil person. Hate. I haven't done anything wrong. In police investigation, slander, discrimination, victimization. This sounds to me like a young woman who is having some sort of mental breakdown. Um, possibly more than a confession. Um, there's other angles to look at with this. Um, you know... There's a lot made of, oh, she's in prison now, she's um, just going to have to watch her back and stuff. I, I have a big problem with that in any context, even if she was guilty, frankly. I don't believe in promoting anarchy in prison. And if if she is innocent, we have a situation where there's someone who has been vilified for a crime she didn't commit, crime she didn't commit, and is now a hate figure. And her her safety is in real question. Now, some people have the sort of sadistic pleasure from the idea of criminals getting attacked by other criminals or um, inmates being attacked by other inmates. I, I don't share that sentiment. I'm hardline on crime. I think if someone is absolutely guilty, they belong in prison. If that be is guilty, she should spend the rest of her days in jail. You know, um, I mean, she would be by definition a serial killer. Um, but people, you know, gloating over, oh, she should watch her back and she might be attacked. That's sick. I think that is sick. Um, and the pri I, I don't know which prison she's in, but the staff there have a responsibility, a duty of care to all inmates. And if they kind of turn a blind eye to her being physically attacked, that's corrupt and it's wrong. I would even say that if she's guilty. Why? Because if you allow anarchy in prison, um, then it's a case of inmates taking over and they shouldn't be the ones who are in charge. That's one point. Also, fundamentally, we're a civilised society. You cannot have a situation where vigilanteism is given a green light. You just can't. Um, I think criminals who are definitely guilty should be punished for their crimes, but that shouldn't extend to vigilanteism on the inside. Um, and I... I I find it rather disgusting when people seem to take uh, this joy, this uh, they, they gloat about you know people being attacked on the inside. Um, I certainly think that remorse as guilty people should be punished, officially. But um, in this case, I'm I'm uneasy about it. Um, it's also worth noting that there was a nurse in the Netherlands. I, I forget her name off the top of my head, but. She was actually found to be innocent after five years in prison. And bear in mind, that's the Netherlands, which has a far lower incarceration rate than Britain. So if you could have a miscarriage of justice in somewhere, you know, the liberal Netherlands, um, it just raises questions. We have had miscarriages of justice in this country, more than a few. In Sunderland, a little girl was murdered in 1992, Nikki Allen. It was a high-profile case here. 
and the man who was initially accused of her murder, he, he didn't go to prison, but he was utterly vilified. He went to trial, he was a hate figure, he had to relocate to the south of England. Bastion of Thumbia police formally apologised to him over the way they handled the case, because the actual killer was convicted. Um, Stefan Kitschko in Bradford was another miscarriage of justice. There's the Birmingham Six case, another miscarriage of justice. I think a miscarriage of justice is a terrible thing, and fundamentally what you have with the Lucy Deppie case is one of two things. You either have a callous killer who um, took the lives of seven little defenceless babies, and she is where she belongs, or you have a young woman who is innocent, and she has been scapegoated over hospital failings, corruption, whatever the case may be, or um, a deeply flawed trial. If that is the case, absolutely there needs to be a retrial. Um, because every day she is in prison, she's at risk from other inmates, and every day she's in prison, it would be an injustice. If she is innocent, um, I just think there is a growing amount of evidence that this there are serious doubts on this. Now, people will say, but uh, opening up again, you know, open to wounds of the grieving families. Um, I have enormous sympathy for them, and David Davies made that point as well. Um, but are they really getting justice if the wrong person is in prison when it may in fact have been accidental deaths? I mean, the families won't be experts on the medical side of it. So, you know, they've been told this woman killed your babies um, and she's in prison now. So hopefully you can get some closure. But if it's a miscarriage of justice, that's also obviously it's a travesty against Lucy Letby, but it is also robbing those people of the truth. Um, they have a right to know the truth. They have a right to know how their babies died. It shouldn't be dismissed that they may, this may have been a failing of the hospital and they threw Lucy Letby under the bus to cover themselves. If that is the case, and it is just speculation, I don't have evidence for that. If it's the case, it's an absolute disgrace and utterly callous. Um, so wrap this up. I, I think one of the difficulties here is once sentence, sentence has been passed and once someone is actually in prison, it's very, very difficult to overturn. And that's that's troubling if there is significant evidence that this person may in fact be innocent or at least that the trial was deeply compromised. Um, I'd even be prepared to say she may possibly be guilty of one or two of the deaths, in which case she should still be in prison. But the fact that half of these deaths she wasn't associated with because she wasn't on duty. Why is that being dismissed? Why is that being dismissed? You know, that in itself points to some sort of failing in the hospital. Apparently, American experts on pediatric care have said babies themselves can push the little tube out of their mouth. Um, this whole thing is deeply troubling, and I think a growing number of people are now questioning if she really is guilty. I know that was the case at the time. Um, but it's growing now. And someone like David Davies isn't a conspiracy theorist. You know, he is a long-standing member of parliament who has clearly done his homework on this. He said he'd spent a good bit of the summer researching this. The fact that it's £100,000 to get a court transcript. You know, R Susanna Reid was talking about transparency. That's not transparent. She could say that, you know, the details are published. I don't think that's good enough when you have serious question marks over proceedings and yes opening this up again will be very hard for the families i have huge sympathy for them but that shouldn't be a reason to ignore the fact that there may be a miscarriage of justice at play here and the point is if lucy let be is innocent that isn't actually helping the families it's you know it's robbing them of the um of the truth there was a man in texas this is all related but he spent 38 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, and his first response was to think about uh, the victim's family. Um, the judge apologised, and I don't know if he's got patients he'd like to think he has, but his life's been taken away. Now, Lucy Letby has been in prison for less than a year now, but um, she's got a whole life tariff. The idea that she might be innocent, and this isn't going to be overturned, is frankly sinister, it's chilling. 
because you have a situation where a potentially innocent person languishing in prison for a crime she didn't commit, she'll be a hate figure. It's just very troubling. Now, none of this means that I am saying she's definitely innocent. I don't know that for a fact. She might be guilty. And yes, so was, you know, the jury would have heard the evidence. Um, but the question is, how much evidence did they hear? It's all very well saying she had her day in court. But how good a job did her defence um, counsel do? Um, why wasn't there more experts called into her defence? I just think it seemed so much of the guilty verdict was based on circumstantial evidence, i.e. her being there at the same time, this so-called confession. Um, reading that again, at the time I thought, okay, that's pretty damning. But looking at it again, it sounds to me like someone having a nervous breakdown. And, you know, people can be, people can say erratic things when they're not thinking straight. Um, I don't know, the whole thing's deeply concerning. But I do think uh, Davies has a right to do this. Um, it would be in the public interest because it gets into questions about transparency and hospital failings. It gets into questions about how our justice system is run. There's definitely a public interest uh, at stake here also the basic question of a moral responsibility because if like I say she is innocent that's a that's a terrible thing um, where you have an innocent person punished languishing in prison for a crime they didn't commit for crimes they didn't commit if that is the case and I have to keep emphasizing that because I don't know I just think that some of the things David highlighted there really do raise questions um, and I would say to those who are convinced that she's guilty, what, what's your answer to that? I think they're valid questions.